The Link Cafe siege in Sydney, Australia, is remembered as one of the most tragic events in the country's recent history. Taking place on December 15 and 16, 2014, this event not only shook the nation but also brought global attention to issues of terrorism, public safety, and the complexities of emergency response. This article delves into the details of the siege, the individuals involved, and the broader implications for Australia and the world. On the morning of December 15, 2014, a lone gunman, Manharan Moniz, entered the Lint Chocolate Cafe in Martin Place, a bustling area in the heart of Sydney. Moniz, an Iranian-born cleric with a history of criminal activities and extremist views, took 18 people hostage. Brandishing a sawed-off shotgun, Moniz forced one of the hostages to display a black flag with Arabic script in the cafe's window, leading to immediate speculation about the nature of the attack. Moniz had a long and troubled history. Born in Iran, he moved to Australia in 1996, where he sought political asylum. Over the years, he became known for his radical views and controversial actions, including sending offensive letters to the families of Australian soldiers killed in Afghanistan. He also faced charges of sexual assault and accessory to murder in the case of his ex-wife. Despite his criminal background, Moniz had managed to live relatively under the radar until the day of the siege. As news of the siege broke, it quickly dominated the media landscape. Police and emergency responders converged on the scene, establishing a perimeter around the cafe and evacuating nearby buildings. The area around Martin Place was cordoned off, and a tense standoff ensued. The siege was broadcast live on television and covered extensively by news outlets, capturing the attention of millions of viewers worldwide. Inside the cafe, the hostages faced a terrifying ordeal. Moniz issued a series of demands, including speaking to the Australian Prime Minister and having an Islamic State flag delivered to him. He threatened to detonate bombs he claimed to have planted in various locations around Sydney, although no explosives were ever found. Throughout the standoff, Moniz forced hostages to relay his demands through social media, adding to the widespread anxiety and confusion. Several hostages managed to escape during the course of the siege. Some fled when Moniz became distracted, while others were released by the gunman as part of his attempts to negotiate with authorities. Each escape provided a brief glimmer of hope, but the situation remained volatile and dangerous for those still trapped inside. The siege continued for nearly 17 hours, stretching into the early hours of December 16. As time passed, the situation inside the cafe grew increasingly dire. Reports from escaped hostages indicated that Moniz was becoming more agitated and unpredictable. The authorities, under immense pressure to resolve the situation, continued to negotiate with the gunman while preparing for a potential tactical intervention. The turning point came just after 2 a.m. on December 16, when a series of loud bangs were heard from inside the cafe. The police, fearing for the lives of the remaining hostages, made the decision to storm the building. Armed tactical units entered the cafe, engaging in a brief but intense firefight with Moniz. During the chaos, several hostages were injured, and tragically, two hostages lost their lives. Tori Johnson, the cafe manager, was one of the victims. He was shot and killed by Moniz in the final moments of the siege, reportedly while trying to wrestle the gun away from the attacker. His actions were later hailed as heroic, as he had attempted to protect the other hostages despite the imminent danger. Katrina Dawson, a barrister and mother of three, was the other victim. 
she was struck by police bullets that ricocheted during the raid. Her death, an unintended consequence of the police intervention, added to the tragedy of the event. Moniz was also killed in the ensuing firefight, bringing the siege to a violent and sorrowful end. The immediate aftermath saw emergency responders rushing to provide medical assistance to the injured hostages and secure the scene. The entire ordeal had left a deep emotional scar on the survivors, their families, and the nation as a whole. In the days following the siege, a makeshift memorial sprang up in Martin Place, with thousands of people leaving flowers, messages of support, and tributes to the victims. The outpouring of grief and solidarity from the public was a powerful testament to the impact of the event on the Australian community. People from all walks of life came together to mourn the loss and show support for those affected. The Lindt Café siege prompted a significant and multifaceted response from various sectors of society. Law enforcement agencies conducted a thorough review of their handling of the incident, analyzing the decisions made and identifying areas for improvement. The New South Wales Coroner's Inquest, which began in May 2015 and concluded in 2017, examined the circumstances surrounding the siege and provided a detailed account of what transpired. The coroner's findings highlighted both the strengths and weaknesses of the response. While the police were commended for their bravery and dedication, the inquest identified several critical issues, including communication breakdowns, delays in decision-making, and the lack of a coordinated approach among various agencies. The recommendations from the inquest emphasized the need for improved training, better communication protocols, and enhanced coordination in handling future critical incidents. The siege also spurred a broader conversation about national security and counterterrorism measures in Australia. The government initiated a review of its counterterrorism laws and policies, leading to the implementation of several key changes. These included increased funding for law enforcement agencies, enhanced surveillance capabilities, and stricter measures to prevent the radicalization and recruitment of individuals by extremist groups. Mental health emerged as another critical issue in the aftermath of the siege. Moniz's history of mental health problems and his ability to carry out such a violent act raised questions about the adequacy of mental health support and intervention strategies. The need for better mental health services, particularly for individuals exhibiting signs of radicalization or extreme behavior, became a focal point of public discourse. The Link Cafe siege also had a profound impact on the lives of the survivors and the families of the victims. The psychological trauma experienced by those who were held hostage, witnessed the violence, or lost loved ones was immense. Counseling and support services were made available to help them cope with the aftermath, but the road to healing was long and arduous. In the years since the siege, the memory of Tory Johnson and Katrina Dawson has been honored through various memorials and initiatives. The Tory Johnson Memorial Fund and the Katrina Dawson Foundation were established to support causes that reflect their values and legacies. These efforts aim to turn the tragedy into a source of positive change, providing support for education, mental health, and community initiatives. The Lindt Café siege remains a poignant reminder of the threats posed by terrorism and the importance of vigilance, preparedness, and resilience. It also underscores the complexities and challenges faced by law enforcement and emergency responders in managing such high-stakes situations. The event has left an indelible mark on Australia's collective consciousness, shaping the nation's approach to security, mental health, and community support. As the years pass, 
The lessons learned from the Lindt Café siege continue to inform and guide policies and practices aimed at preventing and responding to similar incidents. The resilience and solidarity shown by the Australian people in the wake of the tragedy stand as a testament to the strength of the human spirit in the face of adversity.